Alors justement, pour aller plus loin dans, dans, dans cette démarche d'Open Government Partnership, euh, notre prochain intervenant justement connaît bien cette, cette thématique puisqu'il est coordinateur pour la société civile à l'Open Government Partnership qui rassemble euh, 65 pays membres. Euh, je vous demande d'accueillir sur scène Monsieur Paul Massen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I took some nice ideas from Laura. I'll try to sneak them into my, my speech as well. A bit more than a decade ago, I was working for a Dutch development agency called HIVOS. Um, this was at the time of the World Summits on the Global, uh, on the World Summits on the Information Society. Some of you might remember them. HIVOS was and is promoting the, the smart use of technology in, in development projects and for civil society advocacy. And one of the parts of their advocacy program was to promote the open source as a principle, but also in practice. And one of my early advocacy successes at the time was partnering with Dutch parliamentarians to pass a resolution asking government to make um, open source the standard for government ICT projects. Um, the motion passed, but government decided to ignore it to a large extent. The last couple of years, the Netherlands has seen a long range of failed government ICT projects. The newest reports by Parliament um, basically concludes, and it will not surprise you, that um, government agencies do not have the right knowledge to make, uh, do not have the knowledge to make the right choices, they don't have the in-house capacity to manage big ICT projects, and they get taken for a ride by the big companies. And in that sense, I think it's very reassuring to see what France is doing um, around open source. And I think it's something the Netherlands could learn from. But the challenge in 2014 is even bigger than a decade ago. We're not just talking about the smart use of technology to improve government processes, to make it more efficient and more effective. We're really talking about fundamentally um, innovating how government does things. Um, opening up policy-making process and thinking of ways to get government back closer to the citizen. We're talking about transparency, accountability, participation, and thinking through how technology can be used for that. And that's where open source, open data, and open government meet. So let me start by introducing um, quickly, I'll skip this one, um, the Open Government Partnership Um, briefly. It was created in 2011 by eight countries and a dozen or so civil society organizations. And the people around the table, and it's very interesting, had a completely different background um, and a dif dif completely different perception of what government should be. But they found each other in the idea that government needed to be more open um, in order to be more transparent, to be more accountable, and to be closer to the citizens. In a way, you could say OGP is a response to two trends that are taking place at the same time. On the one hand, there's a big trend for more openness, which you see reflected in more access to information laws across the globe, in a lot of countries having open data platforms with government information, um, more participation both on and offline. And you see it in a surge of global standards, like transparency standards around aid in the ext extractives industry. At the same time, there's a negative trend where citizens' trust is decreasing, where civic space is declining, democratic institutions are challenged, and corruption is rife. And technology, interestingly enough, is used for both. Governments actually seem to be quite savvy in using ICT when you talk about some of the negative elements we would see as civil society, for example, surveillance. The idea of OGP is to create a platform, to create space for the reformers you have in society. You have them in government, you have them in civil society, you have them in the private sector. So how can you create space for these reformers? Very simple, the idea is countries sign up to the principles of open government, but they also sign up to the practice of open government by signing up to the methodology of OGP, which is very basic. It asks for government to consult and partner widely with actors in society, especially civil society, um, to come up with concrete and ambitious commitments around open government. Um, and part of the model is that there's independent monitoring of those commitments. It's simpler said than done, and, and getting it right is definitely not easier. Like I said, it started three years ago, and in that time we've seen roughly from, this, from the by now 65 member countries, 2,000 commitments around open government. 
Of the first round of 1,000 that already have been assessed by these independent reporters, we can say that the big chunk has been delivered and they were qualified by these independent assessors as being potentially transformative in society. If you analyze them a bit deeper, you will see that a lot of these commitments are having a technology element. They're about um, e-government, partly. They're about opening up data sets from government. Um, they're about proactive disclosure through smart use of technology. But what we don't see yet, and I think that's an omission, is a strong set of commitments around the more difficult parts of open government, like um, changing the culture of government, like openness around the transparency or the justice system, or around the financial sector. That said, let me give you three examples of what countries have done, which I think exemplify why OGP is making uh, a difference. The first, last year the UK promised to make publicly accessible a database of company ownership, who owns the companies. That's a big win on corporate transparency. There's a big set of constructions around corporate ownership that it's very difficult to understand. And opening up the registry will really help um, civil society and others to understand what is actually happening in the corporate sector. Brazil and others have passed access to information laws which have been difficult to get in a whole range of countries. Brazil has another innovation which is very interesting. They publish, the online, they publish online the expenses of civil servants within 24 hours. And I bet you that if civil servants know that their expense is going to be online uh, and open there for everybody to see and check, they're going to be much more careful in thinking through what they'll spend it on. So in that way, it is another sign of how transparency, accountability, and participation link. A third example, civil society in Georgia pushed for a long time on proactive transparency. They had a nice access to information law. They wanted to go a step further. Um, the government decided that all agencies under the executive's supervision um, have to now, going forward, release their information electronically, free of charge, and in easy-to-use open forms. Now, three years on, and I already mentioned that OGP brings together 65 countries. International funders, multilaterals, the private sector, and hundreds of civil society organizations. Only last month, and Laura was already referring to it, a dozen or so heads of state um, in New York celebrated the achievements to date. And although, although there are many challenges to conquer, if you ask me, I think the glass is half full at least. OGP is a model, a platform that will work in some countries, at some moments, at some topics. Um, but if it does, if it all comes together, it truly is opening up societies and making a difference in the life of citizens. So bringing it back to open source. Open source is very much about the same principles as open government. The code is transparent so that others can look at it improve it and use it. By being so transparent and by tracking the changes made, coders are also accountable to each other about what they've done um, and why they've done it. And at the core of the idea is that doing things in a participatory way will improve the quality. Finally, by bringing in more people onto the platform, by making it a community effort, you can tackle the bigger challenge and stimulate learning. So there's a 100% match on principles between open government and open source. So what about the practice? Um, you can see OGP as a big tent or a big platform. That's a design choice. It's a deliberate choice on the, on the side of OGP because reforming societies is a big lift. It's not easy to do and it will take as many reformers as you can get to actually do it. But many of these reformers on the OGP platform are comfortably working and staying in their silos. And that needs to change. Because if you really want to get that big change in culture and in changing government and societies, we do not only need more actors to be involved, we also need more diversity, more connections, both in actors and in issues. We need government to talk to civil society, obviously, but we also very much need civil society to talk to civil society. Let me give you an example. We now have 100 access to information laws across the world. A big advocacy success for civil society, but implementation at best is sketchy. Most countries jumped on the bandwagon of creating open data platforms. But many of these are hardly used. 
partly because the data is not standardized, not free, not machine readable, or simply not interesting enough for entrepreneurs and citizens to care. So is there no real demand for transparency? Is opening up all this information and making government transparent only an elitist dream? I think it's more complex than that. To really improve the access to information situation in a country, it would be great if the technology geeks work with the access to information policy wonks. And they jointly involve media to make the information they push for available and useful. Improve and enrich the data, build advocacy tools around it, but also startups on it. Share the content that we have on the open data platforms through visualizations and use the access to information laws to get the more tricky stuff. Have data specialists working with journalists in understanding the richness of the data. I can go on, but the idea here is that if you connect the issues and the actors, you get something which is much stronger. All these actors should reinforce, not compete. I know it's not easy to get a diversity of people working together. They have different interests, different languages, different cultures, different comfort zones. But there's no alternative. We need all these actors and some constructive conflict between them to get results that truly open up societies. And even more important, make a real difference in the life of citizens. So let me give you three examples of where open government and open source and open data come together. This first one, My Society, is a project in the UK, and some of you might know it. They make websites which, as they say, empower citizens in the UK and around the world, and they work for communities with the aim of opening up the democracies and getting things concretely changed. And that sounds like a lofty vision statement, but if you really look at the projects they do, it is very down to earth. One of their killer apps that's been replicated in many countries, I don't know if it's replicated here, is, is fix, the, fix My Street, which is very simple. Citizens can report about broken streets, broken street lights, um, potholes in the road. They are connected to local government, they repair it. It helps both government and citizens. The Open Institute in Kenya recruited data fellows people that really understand data sets and can visualize the data. And they place those fellows with civil society organizations to build better fact-based advocacy strategies. And they place them with media outlets to help journalists build stories. And the third one, Code for America, and a spin-off like Code for Africa. They engage the tech community to build, to test, and to use open source applications for and with local government. Applications and codes are then put on GitHub so others can use it again. And by placing fellows in government offices, they solve concrete problems around access to social services, they create new inroads for citizens to be part of government, and perhaps most important, they improve the understanding of ICT and its complexities in government. And fourth, I think one of the examples uh, Lord gave me that from now onwards I will use in my presentation is the idea of a government startup. I really like that, that, that concept. So these really are some examples where open government and open data and open source meet in practice. So we've made the connection of how they meet in principle and how they meet in practice. Coming to a close, I personally feel very strongly that if we want innovation and change at scale, we need to come out of our silos and work together. For open government to succeed, we need this community here today as part of the OGP platform. We need to connect better, not just at the level of principles, but definitely also at the level of practice. You are essential in making sure that the potential of technology and the potential of social media are used in the smartest way possible to improve governance and government. Ten years from now, I hope that ICT audit reports tell a different story. One where technology has helped governments to be more efficient and more effective, obviously, but also truly helped opening up society. The ambition of OGP is to restore trust, to create new civic space, and to invigorate democracies. That's the challenge ahead, and I hope you will be part of it. Thank you. Merci, merci Paul pour cette, pour cette intervention.